Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360 and this uh, follow along video because uh, this starts with a step file which I cannot share with you. Uh, this started as a Facebook question, the question was how how can I make a holder for this, this is an, uh, on a manufacturer uh, step file that has some really nice design features, there are some clips and stuff and the design intent is we want to make a 3D printed holder that can hold this part in place for I think they're going to apply some type of graphic design to the front face here and we want a uh, yeah, repetitive manufacturing you want to be able to just place the thing in the jig apply the graphics and remove the part apply input import you know insert the next part and keep on working but there are some problems we can see here I made this angled because if we move this out again, we're gonna look at the real part in a short while here. You can see that these tabs are slightly angled and the front face here has some major curvature. There's nothing strange about the curvature, but it's curved in two directions. It's hard like, how do I do things like this? Another thing, uh, this is just me adding some design intent. The face of the holder here is slightly below the top face, so we get no interference between these. We're gonna have a look at and do that. And uh, in this, I added some chamfer and I did these uh, circular cutouts, which I will not do in this video, just simply circular cuts. So you have somewhere to grab the part without touching the front face. Like if you're gonna apply graphics, you're gonna degrease or somehow clean up the front face. And you don't want to touch it with our dirty fingers. So let's see how we can do this. Uh, we're gonna just we are not going to start a new design. We're gonna do it slightly differently. We're gonna open the step file. So we're gonna do file. We're gonna do open. Open from my computer and find the step file. I simply do open. Oh, öppna in Swedish. I'm sorry about that. I'm using Swedish on my computer because I'm from Sweden. Here we have the step file. Very nicely important. The thing you can notice now is that the timeline disappeared. That is always happens after you import or open a step file. That is because there are some specific tools you can use with the timeline off, which you can't do with timeline on. It'll basically direct modeling. But I will not in any way model on this step file. So I would immediately right click and say uh, capture design history. I want the timeline on so I can go back and forth. I need to change things. The second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a save in my video location uh, folder. Or, and this is a video name the files whichever way you want. I have a massive clutter in this video location now with all the things I designed, so I need to clean it up. That's my problem. Anyway, let's have a look at this design. It's a very nice step find. Some of the things I'm looking at when I see the first was looking from the side here. We can see these tabs are like parallel in this direction. And if you look from the front, it's very really nice. You can see this is most probably designed to be slide from the front straight back on something but if you turn around we can see we have some major curvature tree but the whole intention is for this part to slide along the y-axis so i need to do the cuts along the y-axis but the jig i want to create should be aligned as close as possible to the front face of the part that is of course angled to the y and z-axis so this is how i do it uh, step one, so we have opened the part, but let's turn more region. It's slightly flying out in midair, so I will use a tool I rarely use, but I will do it now before I do anything else. Gonna do more modifying and use a line tool just to keep things in place. Zoom in, and I'm gonna select the bottom face here. We could get some capture points, and I'm gonna just get over so they light up hold down control and you see this marker pops up then i can select one that's roughly in the middle of a part zoom out turn around and i'm going to use the region point here to secure things i will not apply any angle or twist things because it was incorrect orientation it just moves it down so it's on the region point it makes things a bit easier to see there might be better ways to do this uh, if you have, please leave a comment. If you have questions about my workflow, leave a comment. I might skip things. So I now moved it into a reasonably good position, but it's still a body. And I want to right click and do create component from bodies. 
I have a new component. I will immediately rename it. Where are you rename? There you are. Uh, M O one three C S here. Oh, forty seven was the number. So that is our pot number to be here now. The good thing Protein is, is in a component is that I can now apply joints and do other stuff later to the design. So I will now just make a new component. We have now compartmentalized things. We have a party one component. Right click new component. We're gonna name it uh can do holder whatever name you want for it. And as you can see, uh, the other component becomes slightly translucent or see-through. That is in your preferences. You can change that if you want total visibility. I like it like this. If I do a design that's going to be built around or covering something, I mean, it's to me a bit easier to see. That's uh, up to your flavor of design. So, step one. Uh, I'm going to make the projections that I'm going to use for the cut also supports. I'm going to make the sketches first before I get too cluttered on the screen. So I'm going to create a sketch. We are now in our new component. You can see it's active. I'm going to open the, up the browser, create a sketch, turn around, and we get to the front. And as I said earlier, oh, zoom in a straight way. From this direction, we see the front of the part. And that's very nice. Hit P for project. We're going to project in the body. So let's simply just click on the body, click OK, and we're going to hide the component with the part. And we can see we did not get a closed uh, profile. For a lot of reasons, we are doing a projection of the body. There are a lot of faces that might be close to a tangent or straight, and the errors are often uh, the white dots. Those white dots are not connected, dark dots are connected. So those are most probably the problems here. But I'm just going to clean up things because this lines here of a projection I made is exactly or very roughly close to the shape of a part. And I need some clearance. So I'm going to use offset. So I want to clear up things. So I'm going to do window selection from left to right. Select all of the things that are within the window and hit delete on my keyboard. Cleaning up things like you see these really dark, bad corners. Yeah, just simply remove everything here. That was a bit too much. I'm gonna undo that. Uh, can I like remove these? I can. Can I remove those other white dots I don't want? And that's also a bit dirty. So like I like to keep useful parts. What we should remember, this is a way of checking things. If you have a line and hold down the mouse button, sorry, hold down the mouse button, you get this uh, selection system. You can see this is a control point line. This is not a straight line, just to know what you're looking at. We have some messy things here. Window select, delete, window select these. These are uh, artifacts from the tabs. Move over the path, slowly scrolling. We have some strange things here. Uh, let's do like that, like that. We get to this corner, we have some white dots here. I want to remove the arc and that much. We have a white dot here too. Where are you from? Are you from that line or that line or that line? I think you're from that line, so we'll remove that. That looks nicely connected, so I will not touch that. I will not touch the large arc here, which not is an arc, it's a spline. These are connected. Let's zoom out and move over. We have a white here, so okay. I think we remove all the bad parts and yeah, I can simply remove these two here. They are not needed. I'm going to now cover up these with lines. Something more. Yeah, we can move that, remove that too. So I'm going to do L for line and now close up the shape. I'm going to make a, why did you not get fully defined? You know, oh, I got two lines. Sorry. Did you see that? Sometimes you get two lines from things. So I'm going to make like this delete. Going to delete that do a new l for line select the point be careful and select the point and we get a black line that's fully it should be fully defined because it's between two fully defined points so you should never get blue lines when you do this down here we're going to start with the line make sure we get the tangent or parallel constraint in this case it's going to be tangent because it cannot be parallel to control control point spline uh gonna stay stop somewhere here and just hold down the mouse button and get the R command up to here. Use tangent between tangent between these two. And I should get should get a fully defined arc as we are working with this. 
the question down here do i need a line here yes i need a line to l again so i'm gonna go over here hold down the mouse button go up to here hide the part for now use the tangent constraint you can see if i open up my sketches i want to fully define sketch i'm gonna move things over move things over move things over here we are done move up we have here we are missing some things here let's turn on the part uh oh sorry I hit escape by mistake uh i will move this line to clean it up a bit do a line from here up do an arc use tangent get to did that become fully constrained no nope. hide the part what's the problem this line is not fully defined so once again tangent between this line and uh Go away component tangent between these two can i do that i can't do that can we make it horizontal should be horizontal why are you not fully defined are there something else moving around sometimes fusion do bad things can we do like that we can do like that gonna play around a bit try to find if we can get it fully defined some yeah nah, seems like fusion doesn't like that arc anyway uh, it can be that this is not really fully defined in all ways. Let's keep it like that. It still would work. Line, line from here to here. Or I hope it would work. And we got our full profile. And that also become blue. Why are you blue? Oh, I don't want that one. Oh, once again, two lines. Delete the line. Start over. Select one. Move over and line that's a bit of a naughty thing fusion sometimes does when you start a line it produces two lines and oh we get a fully defined sketch for some reason it now understands what we want to do we have a fully defined profile gonna mark all of it and now turn it into construction geometry because i want to now do an offset uh the line should still be selected now you can see it's a bit blue so it over the keyboard and we get the offset here we have a bit of design intent how much offset do we want looking straight on the part we need to remember we're going to slide at a slight angle in so the offset will be slightly lower due to the angle uh, but let's do it like 0. oops sorry 0.5 now let's do it 0. 0.6 millimeters so you get 0. 0.6 millimeters clearance around the full part hit okay so we're going to finish sketch so i'm going to rename this uh projection including offset of a chunky projection uh, outside body like that i'm going to hide it turn on our part and now we're going to do the second projection i'm going to create another sketch in this case i want the inner face of a part so i'm going to p for project select the inside face here i make sure oh sorry not body because she switches to specified entities and make sure i get only the face of a part gonna hit okay turn around and gonna hide the part once again of the original step you can see we get some uh, white dots in here and we need to fix them i don't have a closed profile so I'm simply gonna delete this line move in delete this line select this line and hit delete l on the keyboard and now close the profile close the profile close the profile here close profile thank you escape to turn off the line command window selection switch it to construction geometry you can see it's still selected o on the keyboard for offset if fusion can understand that i'm hitting the o key so let's redo that window selection Oh, my keyboard for offset. Sometimes Fusion doesn't understand after you've done a selection. The second time you do a, a sometimes feature with the keyboard shortcut, I don't know why. We're now going to move this inwards, of course, because uh, this is a projection of an inside face, and we don't want uh, this is going to be the internal support, and we don't want it to interfere with the bent corners of a part. So let's do that uh, minus one. And we get we can turn on the part and have a look turn on part there you are uh, if we look from the back we can see you can see the faces here you can see we are slightly inside everywhere we are not touching anything we are quite close to the tabs here this can be a problem so good looking from all direction maybe we should do this minus 1.5 so don't interfere with these or you could do some extra geometry to avoid if we want really close support 
for this. I'm not gonna do minus 1.5 so we don't uh, get snags on these little parties. Hit OK. I'm gonna finish sketch. Hide the part a bit for now. I'm gonna have a look. This is my sketch. Hide the sketch. And we're gonna rename it. Now I don't want to edit the sketch. Sometimes you is a bit naughty when you want to rename things. Okay, let's right click and do a rename instead. Uh, pro. Do a spot correction. Projection. Inside face. Inside face. Like that. Turn on our part. And the sketches are disappeared. Let's turn on our component with the part in. So what we've done now, we have two here. These two are a projection we're going to use for do the cutout and do the support. But we have not created our body. Or our yeah, basic body we're going to work with. And I don't want to create the body in this direction. They could be really thick. I want to make the support as close as possible to the angle of the front face here. And now I need to do some decision, decisions on which... Uh, you can see I have four points. Uh, four points does not construct a flat, pla flat plane. But three points do. So I can use three points from this face. And my design intent is to make the plane as close as possible to the top edge here and the uh, edge further away here. And this part that drops down here needs to drop down inside of the, the holder slightly. Or do a slightly cut down. So we're going to do construction. We're going to do a plane through three points. This can be a bit hard to see the points. I'm going to zoom in here. And try to find a front point here. You can see there's a very faint white dot that pops up. I want to make sure I select on the front face. I'm going to select here. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to move over to this corner here. Fine. Make sure I don't happen to select uh, inside points. So I want the point here. You can think you can see the point. It's, where are you? Where are the intersection? It's out there. You can see there's a very faint white dot. So I'm going to select that one. And now move down as far as possible down here. Find this corner of the front face. And that is down here. And now get construction plan. Hit OK. We have a look now. This is going to be like a flat orientation. This is the close I can get because the part is like curved and twisted at the same time. But this is OK. This is how I want to do it. It's going to hit. We have a plane now. We are going to create a sketch on this the new plane. And I will do P for project once again. Project in the body of a part. Gonna hit OK. Hide the part. You really don't need to clean up this, but I think it gets the sketch gets a bit messy. So step one, I'm gonna select everything, turn it into construction geometry. And I'm simply gonna delete this uh, projection of these holes here. Project delete this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner, just to get the sketch a bit uh, cleaner. Because I only want this rest reference for the square I'm going to make. A rectangle. So we're going to make a large rectangle. And now we can start dimensioning. D for dimension. From here to here. Let's see. I want to have. Uh, can we do 20 millimeters this time? Let's do it 20. I want to have the same distance on this side from the part. 20. Sorry. I wanted this dimension. That dimension. So I don't need to type it in more than once. Uh, top and bottom I might need more I know it will work it depends on the angle of those small tabs on the step files but I will simply select here pick up a dimension select down here make sure I get a fully defined sketch with dimension in all directions so I've used the part as a reference to make uh, the holder slightly bigger than the part I'm going to finish sketch turn on my component to have a look at it of a part like that I'm going to hit E for extrude I want to make it in two directions because or two sides because I knew uh, the part is slightly above and below and above I really don't care I'm just going to pull this out because I'm going to trim that down later I'm going to make that like 50 millimeters now uh, in the other direction I need to be a bit careful I want this to cover the tabs you can see the tabs are disappearing and I want maybe a bit more so let, yeah, let's make it uh, 25 this, of course, can be edited later. I'm going to do OK. And by that, we have hidden our part. We can do a wireframe just to have a look. So, OK, we are hidden our part inside. Thank you very much. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to make uh, that like that. Uh, we're going to that. 
folder outline so we know what that sketch is doing gonna hide uh gonna do go back to normal uh, or shaded with visible edge and of course uh, i'm changing visual styles when jumping around between wireframe and different things you have it down here but i'm using a shortcut i have a specific video on that visible edges only and i've hidden that sketch and i'm gonna hit it, hide this body because the problem of course is that the holder right now is covering a whole part i now somehow want the top face of a holder to apply to the front face of a part here so we're going to jump over to surface tool open up a body folder so we can see things we have our solid body here we're going to make an offset face you find it under create or up here an offset gonna make sure i turn off chain selection or way to main offset face of a complete body i don't want that i only want the front face here uh, a lot of bit i'm creating right now is not visible i know that because i hit the bodies but i really don't care for now the thing i need to think about is i would do a zero offset uh, the edges or, or the face of the hold I'm creating will be aligned with this. If I apply a positive in this direction, uh, I'm going to get it above. Yes, I can turn on the bodies. Let's make them visible like this. So you can see, if I move it upwards, uh, the hold will be uh, above the part or like I think I want to do it. I want to make it slightly below so they don't interfere with the face. I'm going to move it minus one millimeter like that. Hit OK hide a little and we can keep a part now we're gonna hide the part and the second thing i have this of course is right now inside this solid body i will hit i will now do shift n so i get some nicer color so we can see different parts uh, i hate the gray sometimes in this game in this game sorry in this software uh this is now too small to be useful so we're going to do extend surface extend select all outer edges dun, 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 dun like that and turn on our body and we can see uh, the surface body is still totally inside of this so what we will do we now drag this the good thing this is nice i mean this might not always work but this was nearly nicely we need to be careful with the cutout here if we do this too long it will flip and create this strange geometry so we want to stop before that and we might make sure that the surface body is cutting the complete uh solid body gonna hit okay now you have uh, you can do split body so you want to split away the top part or we can do the tool use the tool of replace face uh, source face is going to be the flat face up here and the target face is going to be our surface body click on that you can see it like it does a split body and removes the other body gonna hit okay wait for fusion to think for a while and the surface body has done its works so i'm going to do right click and i'm going to do remove not delete remove have a clean timeline and if we turn on our part now we can see it slightly protrudes outside the shape so yeah thank you that's good hide the part for now going to turn our outside body sketch on this is going to be the complete cut count so e for extrude the profile is selected once again we need to do it on two sides this size that's out here we're just going to simply do in this direction so let's do that 50 again the other way i want to somehow do the cut uh, in relationship to the bottom here so i'm going to do not distance i'm going to do two object select the bottom face you can see the sketch is now cutting all the way through and i don't want that i want to back it up like minus three millimeters can turn on my part to have a look we can have a look later so we don't get interference but i'm i'm just gonna stay stop here for now do okay do the extrude hide the sketch and turn on our little part we can have a look you can see here okay uh, there's enough room there we are not touching any tabs anywhere so we have plenty of room backwards yeah that's good hide the part for now turn on our projection on the inside face do an e for extrude this here now we want to do it slightly differently we want to start from the bottom face here so i'm going to profile plane now we're going for an object i'm going to start to extrude from this face and the distance is going to be two object hide the body we have here and turn on our part turn it around and the thing i want to select you can see it's ghosting where you're starting from i want to end up touching the inside face so i'm going to click on the inside face here 
you can see it extrudes, starts from the bottom and stops at the part. Right now it's a new body, so I'm going to turn on the visibility of this body here. Hide the part for now, it doesn't need to be visible. And hit OK for join. I'm going to hide the sketch. So what we have now, we have like the basic design of this. Now we can start, let's turn on this so we can have a look. It's looking a bit strange now, this is... Uh, Resolution. So let's jump up to our base like here. And I forgot to save for a long while. So I'll do a save now. That's bad of me. I should really save more often. From here now we can do a couple of things. That, but this is a bit like in a really strange orientation. So I want to start using joints to move this part in a direction. Make a look at it. First of all, I want to create the joint between these two parts. So I will do an as build joint because I want to move. I don't want to move things around. It's a correct uh, position right now. As build joints. I'm going to select the two components. Can do it in the browser. But I want this to be a slider. I want to be able to slide the part in and out. And Fusion is asking for some point. And I will now hide the holder because what I want to use is the edge of these tabs happens to be the correct orientation. So we move the mouse over here until it finds this point here. You can see it snaps in. I don't want simply want to select the edge. I want this point here. I'm going to turn on the holder. Have a look. We can do a preview motion. Oh, that's look nice. Uh, but we want to limit the moment. Well, limit the motion of a limit. Off. Limit the motion of a joint, sorry. Uh, so let's see, I think that goes to need minus 50. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Maximum needs to be 50. A minimum needs to be zero. So we could preview the motion. We got this motion. We can, of course, make it to move it further away. Let's do it 100. So we know, okay, now these two have a joint between each other. I'm going to hit okay. The second thing I want to do, this is like a stupid angle, so we do joint. I will select uh, the bottom here, just yeah, simply find the point here. And the other one, I'm going to turn on the origin. Select the origin point here. Let's see if I get to the correct direction, like that. You can see it moves over that part. And of course, the motion in this case is rigid. I don't want to move it around. It's okay. And by we had applied the joint earlier, the part will follow along can hide the joints visibility, hide the origin, and now we can take the part and move it in and out. And from here, I would keep on designing if I want to do uh, like uh, some chamfers, good chamfer maybe, all edges, uh, oops, not that one, not the better edge, uh, this face and this face with a two millimeter chamfer, does that work? Yes. And you can apply the cutouts and other things. Now it's in a orientation. We can have a look at it. And we have a joint that works. We can have a look at things. We can do analysis to check if we have any interference. We do it like that. We can move things, things in and out. We can turn that. And to check if we have interference, of course, we have a tool for that. Interference. Select our two components and do a compute. And it says no interference detected. Good, the parts are not touching more than that. It's uh, supported by this here, but they're not interfering in any way. So this uh, was a bit of a messy video. I know I was wanted to show you how I think and work with a thing like this. And as a small disclaimer, I'm a, what you might call a hobby user. I'm not a professional in CAD in any way. And from here you can like, okay, this cutout is maybe too deep. You can start, uh, changing things like do i need to make uh, the hold of his thick and so but you have a starting point to play around so i have i hope you found something interesting and useful in this video that said take care and see you around goodbye